Okay, we are continuing to work on assignment one. So I am going to go ahead and open in PhotoP the PSD file from my computer. And I have it nicely organized in a digital art folder that's on my desktop and a folder for assignment one. And then this is the latest Photoshop pro project I was working on, right? Remember when you save as a PSD from PhotoP, it goes to wherever your files download automatically. And it will keep whatever name you already have it named. So you want the most recent. So it's good with projects, even if I were working professionally, it's good not to, to start a project and finish it all in one sitting when it's a serious project and not just a sketch. Because now, having had a few days away from it, I realize there are some elements here that maybe aren't so necessary. It's silly for me to keep trying to make this background mountain work. I can do it, but it just doesn't seem to, to fit with the intentions of the rest of my image. And then it's maybe a little silly to get make this rock work. So again, how can you find layers easily? I have my sketch as a transparent layer over the top, but it's locked. So I can just turn that off and not need to worry about accidentally selecting it because it's locked. Otherwise, I can use my move tool, the arrow at the top of the tools, and have auto select checked. And by having auto select checked with the move tool, I can just click on the layer and it will select it for me. And then I can decide, okay, why is it there? What is it covering up? And is that helpful? And it actually is covering up some interesting things. So I might, I, I will use this, but I have to clearly change the color for it. And then in terms of the other thing, so you might have aspects of your composition that you are working on that now that you have had some time away from it, you want to be a little critical about what you have. And so I can see, well, does that mountain add anything? And no, it really doesn't. What if I bring it up through the layers? Yeah, it's so out of focus and unnecessary. I think I'm just going to delete that. And that's why it's good to have more than five references to play with, right? I can also question my sketch. Even though this matches my sketch pretty well, I can decide, oh, this moon, I want to move it maybe higher and up into a corner, right? Or maybe I even want to move it over to this side. You have full control. I do like how it's kind of covered by the horizon here. So let's keep it there. These elements, the crystals, I made a lot bigger than they are in my sketch. So you can make changes based on composition. And I haven't finalized these yet. But what's nice about them is they're going to help uh, review what we did last class, right? So. Before I can move to changing colors and changing lighting, I just want to make sure everything's cut out and everything makes sense, right? And so I'm going to start with this guy. And I'm just going to use my lasso tool. And I have zero feather on the lasso tool. So it's going to be a really sharp break. You know, no softening of the edge at all because this is the extreme foreground. And I'm just doing chunk by chunk and cutting it out. I'm trying to get 
a clean cutout for the layer. Now some of the, the other selection tools that we talked about that might be helpful. Nothing gives you as full control as the direct lasso tool. And luckily this is pretty easy to cut out. But you can see that that's a pretty clear edge between the black and the light edge there. So I could try the magic wand, have contiguous on, have a fairly low tolerance. So around 16 or maybe 10. And then I can click and delete. But that's going to leave little remnants. Right. So I could also use my eraser and I could erase it, but that's always going to soften it a little bit unless I have a 100% hard edged eraser. So when I want really clean edges, I just use the lasso tool. Now, if I want a perfectly straight clean edge, I might use the polygonal lasso tool, which allows me to set little anchor points and change direction just by clicking and dragging. So I can find a perfect line, but then I have to connect back to the beginning and then I can delete. So these are our different types of lasso tools. All right, so I've got that crystal cut out. Now I can deal with this crystal. Why did we place and scale everything before we cut them out? So you don't waste time cutting things out that aren't in the picture plane. Right. So now I'm just going to use the polygonal lasso for all of this. I click, I drag a straight line. And change direction in subtle ways because it's not exactly straight. And just to show you one chunk at a time. And I gotta go back to the beginning and then delete. But even using that, it doesn't give me the full control that just the freehand lasso does. Because I missed a little bit of shadow on this edge. So I'm just gonna go in with no feather and cut that out. And the same thing with the black on this edge. So PhotoP gives us full control of every pixel within this grid. So it's up to you to play with the tools and find what you like best for manipulating those pixels. And right now we're talking about the edges of our collage pieces. And it's best to keep them sharp and then soften them because the computer is much better at softening things. It's not able to bring sharpness back. And you want it to be sharpest generally in your foreground because in art, things are that are um, sharpest and in focus and things that are the most contrasted, you know, with lights and darks, are going to come forward into the foreground. And that's where lighting and everything comes in. All right, so now I have a lot of elements. I have enough. Um, I have little things that I might adjust, like this background sky. I think I might want to grow it a little bit. So I'm going to hit control T and I'm going to extend it up just so I can get the top of the, uh, the rock in there. And because I cut everything else out so nicely, that doesn't hurt anything. Right. And then I can move my guide, go beyond the shape of my sketch. 
and you're even welcome to crop in your sketch if you feel that that makes for a better composition. And then I think I might want a little bit more space on the left. So I'm going to take control T and I'm going to extend that background a little bit over to the left as well. It's already extended. So I'm going to take a new layer, this middle ground layer, and it depends, you know, what you have the reference for. And I'm going to control T and just nudge that. You know, I'm not even going to just use scale. I'm going to right click and I'm going to use distort. I'm just going to drag this edge of atmosphere off a little bit. Just like that. And then I don't want these mountains to look strange. So I might also drag it off and kind of straighten those up a little. So we're kind of nipping and tucking. Making final design decisions. Seeing where things overlap. And I think all that works. Okay, so now I have finished with the refined cutout stage. So I am now going to crop it because I don't need any outside space anymore. And that saves a lot of memory. And then I can turn off the guides. And to do that, on my Mac, I'm going to say Command semicolon. That turns on and off guides. For a PC in Photopea, I believe that's Control semicolon. But you can also see it under View and where it says Guides. Under Show, it will show you your shortcut. But it's good to be able to turn them on and off. OK. And the reason we want to turn them off is we want to be able to check our corners and our edges before we finish it all. All right. So now we have everything placed and cut out. But we haven't changed the color on anything. And one of my goals is to make this feel really colorful. And the sky is already pretty colorful. The eclipsed sun is already really colorful. So what's next? Well, I think I want to play with this foreground volcanic rock, which is a really neat shape, has a really neat texture to it. It definitely adds a lot of depth to my image to be looking past that, but it's not very colorful. So we're going to do two steps. And I'm only going to show it with this rock in this video, and then we'll do it for every element in the next video. We're first going to play with the lighting, which means the lights, the darks, and the midtones. And then we're going to play with the color, the color temperature and the color hue. Right now it's brownish, and it's kind of mid-lit. So I want to make it a little bit more contrasted. So to play with the lighting, I'm going to go to, I'm going to select the layer. And I'm going to go to Image Adjustments. These are called Direct Adjustments. They are going to change the pixels in that layer. And if you're really worried about it, you can always make a duplicate of that layer first. So if I hit Command-J, and I can even rename that layer, these are going to be the Layer 6. So on my Layer 6 copy here, I'm going to make these adjustments. I go to Image, Adjustments, and for Lighting, all the, the top four, and this is the same in Photoshop, all have to do with lighting. The one that I'm going to teach you for this semester is Levels. I think it's the most um, user-friendly and all-inclusive. So Levels gives us what's called a histogram. It shows us that the level of blacks 
to the level of whites. I have a lot more blacks in this image than I have pure whites. 